Welcome to the Matt Pierre Career Mode series. For four seasons, we have followed Matt's career with the Indianapolis Colts. Matt has accomplished a lot in a very short amount of time. He's become one of the elite running backs in the NFL and has put up massive numbers in each of his four seasons. A dominant threat on the ground and in the air, Matt has been named a three-time Pro Bowler, three-time Best Running Back of the Year, and most recently, the Offensive Player of the Year in the AFC. There aren't too many running backs quite like Matt Pierre. And while he's accomplished a lot, his awards don't go much further than individual success. And that takes us here to the end of his fourth season with the Indianapolis Colts. Matt Pierre set to become a free agent for the first time. While Matt has accomplished many great things in these four years, he has only been to one playoff and only played in one playoff game, being defeated by the Cleveland Browns. The Colts have come close to making it to the postseason more than that one appearance, but for four seasons they have been unable to become a truly great team. No division titles, no playoff victories, and certainly no Super Bowl championships for Matt Pierre. So after four years, it's time to begin a new chapter for Matt Pierre and his quest to become one of the greatest running backs of all time. No longer with the Colts, Matt has hit the free agent market and as expected, there is a lot of interest. Among the teams bidding are the Cincinnati Bengals, the New York Giants, the New York Jets, the Denver Broncos, and even the team he grew up less than 100 miles from, the New Orleans Saints. Plenty of interest here in Matt Pierre from playoff teams a year ago or teams looking to break into that status. We have the Cincinnati Bengals with an aging Andy Dalton, 33-year-old A.J. Green, and they're coming off a year where they had the worst record in the NFL. The New York Jets made the playoffs, and many of their best players are on defense, so they're trying to get some help for Teddy Bridgewater. He is 28 and is playing some pretty good football, not an elite quarterback. And they've made an effort to get some receiver help with Tyrell Williams and Emmanuel Sanders. The Denver Broncos were an interesting option. They made the playoffs last year. They still have Chris Harris, Vaughn Miller, but they're trying to find their way on offense with young quarterback Logan Lang, who does appear to be a good young quarterback. The New Orleans Saints also have a young quarterback in Cole Bulaga, who might not be as far along in his development, but they do have a really good receiving core with Michael Thomas and Willie Sneed at the top, and they have one of the better offensive lines across the board. So where is the right fit for Matt Pierre? Does he want to join a young quarterback with amazing potential like Ross Blevins? However, the Ravens don't have much at receiver right now. They have one of the weakest receiving cores in the league. Washington, meanwhile, does not. They just signed DeAndre Hopkins. They have Kirk Cousins now at 33. I wonder if they franchise tagged him like seven years in a row. And then they also have Jamison Crowder and an aging Jordan Reed. So this is a pretty good team who also has a good offensive line. The Lions made the playoffs a year ago and they have a 33-year-old Matt Stafford at quarterback. However, their skill players are aging alongside him. Golden Tate and Marvin Jones are in their 30s. But the Lions do have another good offensive line and I thought that was a pretty important part of this decision. Then there's the Philadelphia Eagles with Carson Wentz. Alshon Jeffrey and Kenny Stills are good, but the receiving core isn't great. The Eagles have an outstanding offensive line, and they've built a fierce defense with a front seven that thankfully Matt Pierre would not have to face if he became a member of the Eagles. So there was a lot to consider here. And all the while, keep in mind, the Colts never made an offer to Matt Pierre. They have stuck with the 23-year-old Mylon Verrett, and they are prepared to move on without Matt Pierre. So Matt is not going back to Indianapolis. And a decision has been made. Matt Pierre will be headed home. He's going to New Orleans to join the Saints. Now why the Saints over a team like Philadelphia, for example, that seemed to have a lot of the pieces we were looking for? Well, in New Orleans, I think Matt Pierre was the missing piece to make this one of the best offenses in the league. They have a young quarterback who will still need some time, but behind that offensive line, and with receivers like Michael Thomas, Willie Sneed, and Isaiah McKenzie, I think there's real potential here. 
Sneed and Thomas are both rated very highly. And then you add in the ascending Isaiah McKenzie, who's a big playmaker in the slot. The Saints were not a very good team last year, so they also have the number three overall selection. So here we go through the draft, no longer looking to see what the Colts are doing at number three. The New Orleans Saints decide to go defense with an outside linebacker. And I thought that was the right move to strengthen the defense that has players like Sheldon Rankins and Marshawn Lattimore. They go back to tight end in the second round. In the third, they go defense again with a left end. A center then at pick 99. Four picks in the top 100, and they finish it out with a receiver in the final selection. Now check out this draft class. J. Roan McClure, 80 overall outside linebacker, superstar development. This is what the Saints needed. 86 block shed, 85 speed. Then the tight end Clarence Tlaib, also an 80 overall. Doesn't have great speed, but he can block and he can catch. And as a bonus, the center they selected later on, KC Phillips, has quick development and could be a starter down the road. And there's the new quarterback now for Matt Pierre. Cole Bulaga will be developing, but I think that the pieces are in place for the Saints to be the offense that helps Matt Pierre return to the postseason. It's now time to begin the new chapter for Matt Pierre in New Orleans. What do you think of the decision for Matt Pierre to head home to Louisiana and play for the Saints? I think this offense has a lot of potential with Matt Pierre here. And especially with this young quarterback, if he develops with these great receivers and Matt Pierre, this could be the best offense in football or one of the best offenses. We're going to upgrade some ratings now for Matt to get this season underway. Starting here with catching, want to get that to an 80. I've liked working on trucking recently. I still like focusing on getting yards after contact. Then we'll go with carrying and probably save the rest. So, Matt, a 91 overall player, one of the best players on this Saints team, and I know they weren't very good last year, but I think they can definitely take it a step forward, adding Matt Pierre and having what I thought was a really good draft. I, was, I came away impressed by the selections that they made. We're going to open this year against the Miami Dolphins at home. Matt's Saint debut. Before we do that, though, we have to set the season goal. And there's not a lot of creativity you can use here, so I'm just going to go with the most rushing touchdowns and try to have another big year in a new uniform. It's time, Matt Pierre set to make his New Orleans Saint debut as Matt heads home. I can't wait. I've been looking forward to getting Matt in a new uniform, getting some new teammates, and seeing how the next chapter of his career unfolds. And here it is, time for Matt Pierre to make his debut. The New Orleans Saints, I think, have a lot of potential. They weren't great a year ago. They were only 5-11. But I really think this can be different. And I think Matt Pierre can help this team ascend. And now it's time to make his debut with a carry. The first in a Saint uniform. No gain here for Matt Pierre. We have Willie Sneed to the right. Michael Thomas to the left. And Cole Bulaga under center. Another run. And Pierre muscles through some contact to get two. But now we got to throw it. It skipped the first third down for Matt Pierre, so couldn't see it. But I like these receivers with Sneed, McKenzie, and Michael Thomas, who is one of the best receivers in the league as he lays out for his first catch of the year. That's what I'm talking about. There were things I liked about playing with the Colts, but I do think this can be a big step up. Wow, that was a great play. I think that linebacker they have is really good. I've seen him make a couple plays so far, but... T.Y. Hilton and Antoine Sherrills were your speedy deep threats. Michael Thomas brings something to the table that we never really had in Indy. Plus, I think we still have big play capabilities. Oh, that's close. Pierre to the 44, and they mark him shy. 
Coach wants to go for it. You know how things are run here. An aggressive up-tempo offense. Fourth and one. And we throw a screen. Or Bulaga gets sacked before it can get set up. But hey, a quick turnover and we're right back on the field. So it's okay. Single eye look here from the Dolphins as Sneed gets his turn now. Gain of six. I was really surprised to see that Sneed and Isaiah McKenzie were as highly rated as they are. And that was a big part of this decision. Just having that deep receiving core and a quarterback who I thought would develop really well was big. And now Pierre breaks off his first touchdown as a Saint. Number 43 goes 43 yards to the house. Welcome home, Matt Pierre. That's the excitement that Matt Pierre can bring to the Saints. First and ten for Bulaga. Outside, there's Thomas. Now we have this Superdome crowd behind us, and we're up four on the Dolphins. Run it again. Pierre into the open field, and met after a gain of nine. On first and ten, now we go with some play action. And Bulaga takes a shot. There we go, Michael Thomas. We just didn't have that element really in Indy. That physical presence anywhere on the field. Michael Thomas is such a special player. And now we have a, a running back like Matt and a receiver like Thomas together. And that's going to make Bulaga's development even easier. Here's Matt, flag on the play, and now we probably back up. So he regains some penalty yardage. Now it's second and nine. On the outside, that is going to be a touchdown. Isaiah McKenzie. A little bit of everything here from the Saints in the first half as we create a nice two-score lead. I get to learn this new playbook too, and so far I'm liking a lot of the things I'm seeing. Let's run it here right through the middle again with Matt. Now seven carries, 63 yards. Up by eight. Now Bulaga underneath, and that's Martellus Bennett. I feel like this offense has a lot of flexibility. We have a couple tight ends, I think, that are starting caliber, especially with that rookie that we drafted. Then you have three receivers who are all very good. Matt Pierre, a mobile quarterback. I feel like there's so many options, and right now they're just all working. Let's run it here on second and inches. Oh my, and Dominican Sue. I came away really impressed with the draft, and I thought that the center that we got was a steal. We might be able to have him start at some point and create an even better offensive line. But here, Rashad Jones just denied us on third down. All right, jumping ahead, ball at the 49-yard line now, so we're pretty close to scoring range again, but we get dropped now. That's Harris with his second sack of the day. Oh, no Matt on this play? We have Latavius Murray in the game. I don't know what happened to bring Latavius Murray in, but that's a throw to Murray, and it's a pretty good play. That's interesting. That formation by default has the running back too. And you can like flick the right stick and go through different types of adjustments. And one of them is actually like halfback one. They label it that. So it's designed to bring your back up in the game. There's the first miss by Bulaga. But that's okay if he misses one every 11. Don't expect that to be the case. But I'm impressed so far by the young quarterback. I am concerned a bit about his short accuracy. It was lower than I like. But his deep accuracy is really good. He does have quick development. So I think that it's not going to be much of an issue. Let's go third and six now. And let's attack this defense downfield. Bulaga looking to scramble, and he gets into trouble. Sacked. We nailed a 52-yard field goal to add some points. And you know that wasn't happening last year with Adam Vinatieri, who I bet still has not retired. All right, let's go on to the second half. That was a fun first two quarters in a Saint uniform. All righty now. In the third quarter, up by eight against the Dolphins. Bulaga has some real speed. 
I don't know who our backup is. I did not really pay much attention to that. Matt, don't tire yourself out. Let's again head to the air. And Matt off his cut. Nope, it's going to be Michael Thomas with about seven. You can see down below the Colts suffer a loss in their first game without Matt Pierre. There we go. Cut off the block from Bennett. That's a gain of 10. Not a bad debut we're having. I'm also looking forward to our division battles, which won't be for a little bit yet. Oh, that's caught by Pierre. Nope, it's dropped. And I think they're going to get him for illegal touching because I can't see out there. From the 35, Bulaga drifting. Oh, no. I thought he had an open man, but there was no chance of throwing that football. Well, it skipped a very long third down, and we made it happen. Cole Bulaga's numbers are really good today. And I'll let him keep throwing if he's going to play this well. Flag on the play. And this is also through the hands of Matt. First down and 20. Bulaga... Again, scrambling around, trying to help him out here. He finds a block. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's a fumble. He got it back. He got very lucky. Not an experienced blocker. And now from the two, Pierre gets slammed to the ground after a loss. Just get the points. I don't really care how. It's second and goal. Bulaga. He's got to make a decision, and he gets sacked again. No, no, not in the first game. Bulaga is hurt. Uh-oh. Matt Borkley comes into the game and throws a touchdown to Michael Thomas. So, Borkley is the backup, the primary backup on this team. I'm not sure what his ratings are like right now. Hopefully, Bulaga's okay. Well, there's Matt Barkley, so Bulaga obviously not uh, not good right now. Gain of one. Don't try being a hero here, Matt. Just try to get the ball out quick. Make the smart choice. Barkley. Oh, no! That was nearly intercepted. Barkley still in the game as we lead by 12 in the fourth quarter. Very fun debut so far, but hopefully our young quarterback is okay beyond this game as Matt gets three. This time it's play action. And Barkley complete! Michael Thomas for a first down. So Barkley's come in, throw a couple nice passes to Thomas. Offense is still rolling. Back to the ground again, but this is a pretty good Dolphin front four. They've made a number of plays here at the line of scrimmage. Third and seven now. We don't want Miami to get back in this. Barkley with time complete, and Thomas is a little bit short. Good try. 56 yards, that's what I'm talking about. This is a completely different team. Second and goal here from the 11 as the Dolphins turned it over. Sit down. Oh, no! Caught by, no, dropped by Thomas. What a weird play. I thought Matt had six right there. We're on to a new possession now, 30-12, as we do look like we're going to take this win rather convincingly. Just a few minutes to come off the clock as Matt has a 100-yard debut with the Saints. Just keep the clock moving on this play, please. Oh, man. Matt just having a lot of trouble making these catches in traffic. Maybe that's a rating we have to work on now. The Dolphins are trying to make this interesting, but still trail by 14 points as we now focus on taking the remainder of this clock away. From the 43. Uh-oh. Room this time. Gain of seven. And now for the win. In his debut game with New Orleans, Pierre on third and one gets the first. And he'll take it the distance. Touchdown, Matt Pierre. The Saints are going to win this game. That's how you cap off the debut. 
Matt Pierre is back home and he looks better than ever, at least on the ground. We drop 40 points on the Miami Dolphins. This offense looked really good. I didn't think it looked this good this quickly, but hopefully Bulaga's all right so we can do this again next week. Numbers on the day right here. Bulaga very good before his injury. Matt Pierre, 150 yards and two touchdowns on 24 carries. And actually no receptions for Matt Pierre. Just couldn't come away with those tough grabs. Catching traffic is not that expensive. We'll upgrade that a few times and hopefully Matt Pierre can make some of those contested grabs moving forward. But now we have to see if our quarterback is going to be okay. Nobody on the injury report. Cole Blue Laga is all right. And that is great news for this Saints team that looked awesome in week one. Just simple as that. We looked awesome. And I can't wait to keep playing with this team. That was fun. This team looked really good. But it's just one game. We had excellent moments with the Colts. It's been all about consistency, something Matt has never had in his career. His pro career, that is. He was used to winning at Minnesota. So, hope you enjoyed Matt's debut here in year five with the New Orleans Saints. Please leave your feedback down in the comments section. And if we can get this video over 800 likes, next episode is coming your way tomorrow. So thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.